an audience who says that he had one of these near-death experiences, but demons tore at his body and beat him. A rare glimpse at one man's hell when we come back. <laughs> A college professor and an atheist when you had your near-death experience right. right so you always have believed up until this experience that you die you die that's it I was absolutely certain of it and because I was a um, person who was pride prideful of my um, intellectual capabilities mm -hmm. all my friends in the university believed it too yes and so you what, what did you have an accident um, I had a, a perforation of the duodenum mm -hmm. and that went untreated and I was in um, Europe and when this experience began to happen, I didn't believe it was possible that you could be outside your body. And I was in a rage because what I knew couldn't happen was happening to me. And it was the most, as Carol had already said, the most vividly real thing that ever happened to me. And I was, um, because I had no faith or hope or goodness deep down in the core of my heart, I was led off by um, a group of strangers who took me on a long journey in a foggy, area that got increasingly dark and then in time when I was certain that I didn't want to be with these people anymore because they were very scary they started to um, rip and tear me apart and their their joy and their pleasure was my pain and that went on for a great deal of time until ultimately through prayer which I found very late in my life but thank God I did I drove those demons away. My prayers drove them away, and then I had an experience. Your prayers in, in that, in, during that experience, you started to pray. Right. Mm -hmm. When all else failed. When everything else had failed. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. And so the prayer got rid of them. It um, it was like throwing acid on them. They screamed and yelled and um, said every thing that I was doing um, was wrong, and there was no God. But I knew that the. Um, anger that and the rage that they showed that my prayers were powerful but you didn't believe before this happened you didn't believe in God so why would you call on God if you didn't believe in God because a voice from inside of me said three times to me to pray to God and the first time I said I don't believe in God and the second time it said pray to God I said well what have I got to lose and the third time I said I'll give it a try <laughs> okay. and so this experience in hell as you call it changed your life um, to uh, quote my wife, my wife said that the man that she married and had been living with for 20 years died that day, and the person who came back to her was a complete stranger. A better stranger. I'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, were you an, you must have been a pretty bad guy. No, um, by society's standards, I was a good guy. I was yeah. a successful guy. You can do real well in this world being a self-centered, egotistical atheist. Um, matter of fact, a lot of them out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, um, but um, inside, deep down inside, I was cynical. I was cruel. I was manipulative, um, and that's not good. And that's the experience that you had, which is which is in keeping with what we've said. Based upon the way you lived your life, when you die, that moment of death, your experience is based upon the way you lived your life, right? Well, that's Thank what I found, uh, and that's why I titled my book Closer to the Light, is that children seem to just see that pure light. In fact, uh, when I scientifically studied children, 25 of them um, who survived cardiac arrest, 23 of those children only had that experience of a beautiful light, and none of them had hellish kinds of experiences. We will be right back.